Got a new chair. It's the best chair in the world. I went down the rabbit hole of office chairs and found the Herman Miller Aeron remastered. It's uh, used by people like Mark Zuckerberg and Obama. This is good. Anyway, we all know that the earth is round. 99.9% .9 of people agree on that. But you know what most people agree isn't round? The stars in my images lately. Uh, I've been struggling against this issue where the stars are just a little bit malformed. And I've noticed it for a while and it's been getting worse. But more than that, having the long focal length of the Celestron 11 inch Edge HD means that this issue is magnified like six, seven times more than it used to be. So that makes it harder for me to do the longer exposures that I need now that I'm shooting at F7. So I really need to nail this problem. I've been trying a few things, but let's try a few more. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. There's my little uh, YouTube Arduino sub counter so I can always see how many people are subscribing to this channel. It keeps going up, thank you. They're rounding off to the nearest 100 now, which is disappointing, but I guess that's the price of success. The first thing I wanna to do to get rounder stars is to make sure all of this is mechanically sound. And the first step for that is balance. So the first thing I did was I came out and I rebalanced everything. I took off the small piggyback ball head that I had on there, just because I felt like that was getting a little bit asymmetrical. I balanced both the deck and the RA. And the next thing that I'm going to do, polar alignment and the star alignment again, and then do it again. So I'm actually gonna do the polar alignment twice, making sure that the alignment is as close as I can get to being perfect. I don't think the alignment, however, was responsible for what I was seeing in the last video. Uh, I was doing some time lapses in the last video and those ended up being quite a useful diagnostic tool. If you look at the RA axis in my PhD guiding, you'll see that the star is shifting up and down in quite a very predictable period. Now, the periodic error of the CGX should be eight minutes, but judging by the time lapse that I did, and the frequency of this motion, it was about 30 seconds. That's not normal. I haven't touched this CGX since I got it years ago. So it really was overdue for some maintenance. All right, so I found the instruction manual and there is a whole section on care and maintenance. Who would have thought uh, I should probably do some of this. What we're gonna be doing is opening up both of these motor cases, then we'll start guiding, and then I'll make corrections to the distance adjustment screw as needed so that we can monitor to see if the guiding error is going up or down. I have more error in my RA, so I'm going to be making adjustments to that bottom motor there. Uh, make sure you're adjusting the right one and then going back, starting guiding again and see if the error goes up or down. So that is the range screw there. That's the one that you should have tight, but not too tight. So there's about one mil of give when you push on that motor. 
Uh, this one's that distance adjustment screw and that's the real fiddly one. It's basically a process of guide, check the error, make a 1 16th turn, do it again and again and again. <laughs> Now the million dollar question of course is did this actually work and are my stars actually round now? And I'll answer that for you in a second but first I'd like to shout out High Point Scientific. I get great comments about High Point Scientific and they have lifetime support on the products that they sell. They don't have any incentive to push any particular brand because they basically stock everything and they have a price match guarantee. So if you find a lower price somewhere else, let them know and they will match it. I let them know I was doing this video and they let me know that they love CGX mounts and they have a lot of customers using them. So hopefully this helps their customers as well. The mount's been good to me over the years apart from this issue. So hopefully I get it resolved. Now, I've got to tell you something at this point. When I started this video, I was just trying to fix my RA. I didn't know what I was doing was essentially hypertuning. Now, hypertuning is a service that you can pay for. This looks like it's about $495 to do for the CGX mount. To have a third party actually do all of this properly, take it all apart, put it all back together, tune it all. And $495 US in Australian, that's about a million bucks. So I was very pleased to know that you can do some of this yourself and I'm not taking anything apart here, I'm just tweaking it. However, that said, I did reach out to Celestron who were kind enough to give me some feedback on this video so that I say the right things and so you know what you're in for before you start doing all this. And that section in the instruction manual that mentioned these screws, turns out that's a collector's item. They don't put that in the manual anymore because too many people fully screwed up their mounts playing with all of this. I can't stress enough, if you're adjusting this distance screw and you go too far, you could damage your mount to the point of needing it rebuilt entirely. Uh, I have no choice because I need to get this to work, so I'm just doing it very gently and testing as I go. So warning, don't do this. If you've got an in-warranty mount or you are happy to pay for some support if it's out of warranty, I probably suggest you do that. Uh, but if you're like me, you're stuck on a prison island in Australia during a pandemic and you just need to get this fixed, hopefully this video is helpful. If the screws bind when you're turning them, they suggest that you back out the screws, clean the threads and the holes. Dirt or shavings can make it more difficult to adjust. And whatever you do, do not use WD-40. As tempting as it is to just squirt in here and fix that, don't use WD-40. Putting WD-40 in here will actually degrease what's in there and you're essentially mixing greases as well, which is a problem. They recommend you use something called Super Lube. <laughs> Super Lube. We don't have that at our local Bunnings, so I just got a general purpose grease uh, and that should do the trick. Uh, if possible, get a food grade grease and that way you can eat food off your CGX. They also say that um, if you do screw this up by screwing it too tight or getting dirt in there or something, you may end up with a situation where the beveled bearing might be too tight and would need to be retorqued. This is very involved and not something they recommend having the user do. But when I started this process, I didn't know what hypertuning was really. And just with some poking and digging, I was actually able to kind of reverse engineer it and figure it out, which I'm pretty impressed with because I can barely change a tire. Here is what it looked like before I made these adjustments. You can see the RA is terrible and I revealed that in the time lapse. And here is the result after two nights of tweaking. They're still not 100% perfect and I think I want to spend another night doing this, but I am really impressed. What makes me really happy is knowing that all of this time, as I've watched the stars getting elongated over the years, uh, it's not anything I was doing wrong. My balance and my polar line were fine. Uh, even the flexor and guiding, nothing to do with that. It was all to do with the mechanical error in the mount. One that I could resolve with a little bit of jiggery-pokery. you enjoy that episode uh, I'm filming this at the beginning of the episode so I don't know what happened um, hopefully I got the stars round otherwise I'll be pissed my name is Dylan O'Donnell remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die